There we go. Great. Um, again, welcome. My name is Toby Corio, uh, and uh, I am excited to have everybody here to join us to learn more about the hybrid leadership program with the, within the Masters of Science and Communication program here at Northwestern University. Um, <clears throat> to uh, get started here, I just want to be clear uh, the way it's going to work today. We have some panelists, uh, alumni and current students that are going to be sharing some of their experiences with us. Um, I've muted everybody else's video and microphone. So if you have any questions or comments that you would like to add, please feel free to use the chat function um, of BlueJeans here that you should see a, a chat, but, uh, chat button up on the top um, of the BlueJeans tool there. And so uh, feel free to at any time submit any comments or questions that you have as we're moving throughout the presentation. Um, <clears throat> so like I said, my name is Toby Cordu. That's me on the left. I'm the Director of Enrollment Management uh, for the MSC program here, which means basically I manage the marketing and admissions efforts of the program and re am responsible for, for um, bringing in the, the students that you would potentially be learning alongside as a, uh, you're a member of the cohort. And then also with us today is Matt Payton. Matt is the admissions and marketing coordinator um, and will be largely manning the chat. Uh, Matt is uh, really the glue that holds all of the admissions and marketing efforts together. I'm sure many of you have received emails or communication from Matt at some point um, throughout, and if you haven't, you certainly will. Um, a great resource for any and everything um, MSC admissions related. And then I'm very excited that we have uh, some special guests with us today, um, an alumni and two current students. And I'm gonna ask them to introduce themselves. If you don't mind, um, Antonia, uh, sharing a little bit about kind of what you're doing professionally right now. Yes, hi, I am Antonia Kofel. I am an alumni class of 2018. I am currently a program manager in external relations for a leadership advisory and executive search firm. Excellent, and you graduated just last year. Yes, August of 2018. So a proud alumni, I like it. Um, Brandy? Yes, hello, this is Brandy Foley. I am currently an account director with Avant Healthcare Marketing just outside of the Indianapolis area and our primary customers are various sized pharmaceutical companies. And yep. I am currently in the program and looking forward to wrapping things up come August. Wonderful, thank you Brandy and Nate. Hey, I'm Nate Calvert. I'm a public and government affairs advisor for Chevron. Uh, I'm based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, at our business unit headquarters here. Uh, also a member of the class of 2019, so classmates with Brandy. Wonderful. So Nate and Brandy can kind of see the, the light at the end of the tunnel here, and, and Tony is just glad that she's not in their shoes. I'm guessing that's how everybody feels. <laughs> I like it. Um, thank you all. We are certainly going to be coming back to you very shortly here to learn more about your experience. That's kind of the focus of this today. So for those of you that are joining and thinking about um, potentially coming back to school, uh, I want you to kind of get in that headspace, right? Take a second and think about your reasons for considering going back to school. Um, people go to grad school for a lot of different reasons. So, you know, what's your motivation? What goals do you hope to accomplish by coming back to school? Uh, and hopefully as we move through today, you'll learn, you know, more about whether or not the MSc program is able to meet those expectations and is the, the type of program, type of degree, type of education that you're looking for. Um, and I'd like to talk about that a little bit. Let's start with the panel. Why did you decide to come back to school? Um, Brandy, let's start with you. What was happening in your world uh, that, that made you decide that it was the right time to, to come to school, come back? Sure, happy to jump in on that. There are a lot of factors. For a long time, it had been or has been a personal goal of mine to get my master's degree, and I'd always had my eye on Northwestern University, but it never seemed to be the right time. Uh, there were, I, you know, there was always some factor. I've gotten to the point in my life where I was thinking. <laughs> transparency I'm no spring chicken and I never want to wonder what if so it's time for me to really dig in and investigate and see 
if I and if and how I can make this happen. And not only from a personal perspective, but from a professional growth perspective, I wanted something else to also help give me an additional edge out there in the marketplace. And I had no doubt after meeting with Toby and Matt and looking and researching more about the MSC program that it was the ideal fit for me in the communication place, marketplace, and also just because I do truly have a passion for communication and really enjoy the study of it. That's it in a nutshell. I like it. Thank you for sharing. Who else? Sure. Tony and Nate, My experience is Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Tony. Oh, uh, yeah, so my experience is very similar to Brandy's in that um, I had reached out at a level um, at my work for the second time in three and a half years where I had maxed out at the level, at the highest level that I could go within the company. Um, and so there was an element of wanting to um, improve my, my marketplace standing. And I think, you know, I was also motivated by the state of national affairs that I needed to, you know, not... We weren't living in the world of our parents and grandparents where things were, if you put in a certain amount of time, that that would automatically indicate success and you would just, you know, move up the, the chain. That I needed to do something that was going to um, improve where I could be um, and be in much more of a, a candidate that was going to have something that I could bring to the table no matter where I went. And so um, it was partly those those factors as well as being able to be stimulated um, intellectually and be challenged intellectually. I like it, thank you. So a theme so far is, is trying to find a little bit of a competitive advantage in the workplace for both Brandy and Tony. Nate, what was happening in your world? Yeah, mine's not too different from that, but maybe a bit. Um, I've been in the workforce about 10 years. Most of that's been with Chevron, and I would say I've kind of always had my eye on going back to school, you know, basically since I started. Um, and for that 10 years or so, it just really was a matter of what's the right program and the right time. Um, I'm, you know, in a job and in a company that I'm happy with. I wasn't really looking to make a move um, outside my industry. And, you know, for a large part of my career, I was told, you know, look, you don't really have to get a master's degree to advance as long as you keep doing a good job. Interestingly, since I've entered this program and as I'm nearing the end of it, I've had a lot of people tell me, you know, it's really great that you're getting a master's degree and it's really going to help you in your career. So um, that, that was an interesting finding and I guess a good one. But for me, the, the, the decision to come to this program was really um, finding this balance between the type of program with the flexibility and the skills that I wanted to enhance. And so I took a job focused on communications, internal and external. That's when I started looking at communications programs. And when I found Northwestern with the balance of um, online and in-person programs at a prestigious university, um, it really sort of all came together for me. And that was really when I made the decision that, you know, now is the, the right time and the right place to, to get back to school. I like it. I think that makes a lot of sense. And it's probably, <clears throat> I think um, all of your reasons for coming back probably resonate with a lot of people out there. We find that the most common reasons for people coming uh, to the MSC program, specifically the hybrid program, are that they're interested in <clears throat> Um, advancing a little more quickly where they are um, or they're looking for a little bit more of a dramatic change right you're they're you're happy in your industry but looking for a new company or happy in your uh, company but looking to advance more quickly and then I think that um, all three of you mentioned different aspects of just some personal growth right and and learning more and being better at, at everything that you're doing professionally and, and personally as well um, <clears throat> Nate you started to talk a little bit about this Specifically, going back to school, there are a lot of different circumstances going on, but everybody has more options than ever before in terms of graduate education. Um, delivery model, type of degree, um, where it is, the, the different schools that are available. What specifically about Northwestern, what specifically about the MSC program 
was it that uh, made you guys decide to apply specifically again here? Anybody? Did you, did you want me to make a comment, Toby? Yeah, start. sure, please. Sure, yeah. So I would just say for, for me, it was, I think of, say, two or three factors. One was, I mean, knowing if I'm going to go back to school, I, you know, I wanted to go to a university that was known and respected for sort of rigorous education and curriculum. So that's one, and that's Northwestern, right? And I think of sort of maybe other communications programs in particular out there that may not have that same reputation, and I didn't, I didn't want to put my energy into something that wasn't going to um, link me with that type of institution. I would say, two was I, I like the balance of sort of the opportunity to build real relationships and friendships with classmates, and that's where the sort of in-person component was a real draw for me. And I would say, having gone through the program, I do feel like I've gotten gone through most of the program. I do feel like I've been able to build some of those relationships. Um, and I'd say three, and it's a, I think a totally legitimate factor, was just personally, I have family connections in um, the Chicagoland area. I'm currently in Pittsburgh, and I, we thought, my wife and I thought, look, if there was ever a need or an opportunity to move back that way, this would be a great way to sort of have a professional start with a professional network. So those are my three. Tony, what about you? Did you look at a lot of different degree programs? And, and if so, what what uh, what were the factors that made you land specifically on the MSC? Yeah, I actually looked at a program with University of Chicago. Um, and I was, so I was definitely, a, I'm tracking totally um, for the first two with, with Nate. Um, so I was definitely looking for an institution that had a good reputation um, nationally, but internationally as well, and that had rigor. Um, and so that was something that really appealed to me. And But I will say that really what set um, Northwestern apart was that it had a direct communication program that would allow for me to um, complete it in a much less Time. So um, with the University of Chicago role, it would have been um, two years, and it was going to be um, a humanities-related degree. Um, so it would have, well, the prestige and the reputation and the rigor would have been there. I would have been kind of still constantly trying to draw a connection and, you know, to exactly um, – how it would directly help my career, whereas being able to have a program that was, I had a BA in communication and then having a master's in communication, it just tracked really well. Um, and so that was the um, determining factor. And then the other element of it was um, being able to have that in-person on-campus experience and specifically for the HLP, the three days, on campus um, each quarter really, really appealed to me because I really still wanted to have the ability to spend time on campus when other students would be there um, and to, as opposed to just having the Saturdays. Um, and so I think those were the three elements that made Northwestern so attractive to me. That's terrific. Thank you. We're going to dive a little more deeply into two of the points you just brought up, the, specifically the applicability of the course materials and then the importance of those in-residence sessions. So that's a great primer. Um, <clears throat> moving on, we want to make sure everybody kind of understands why the MSC program exists in the first place, right? I think that, uh, like I was saying before, there are a lot of different options when it comes to graduate education. The MSC is unique in that it's an alternative to just about any other degree that, that I've been able to think of. Um, uh, a recent Wall Street Journal article um, from quoting a LinkedIn survey, actually, of 900 executives uh, talked about how 90% of these executives were claiming that um, soft skills or these kind of interpersonal skills were equally or more important than any technical skills that existed within, uh, within their workforce. The same group of people also said that these interpersonal skills, these essential kind of management and, and training skills are severely lacking in the workplace. And the MSC is filling that gap. The stuff that we teach, the curriculum, the tools, the frameworks, 
that you learn in the in the um, MSC program are specifically uh, talking to that 10 percent are, are putting you in a place where you're going to be able to fill the gap and as both Brandy and Tony were talking providing with this you with this kind of competitive advantage in the workplace where you have a set of skills um, and tools and frameworks that the people around you just don't have providing you with uh, like I said opportunities to advance typically a little bit more quickly than than you might expect um, Specifically, the logistics of the hybrid program, to get into that and explain a little bit about kind of what it's going to do. Uh, it's a 12-month program, a little bit less, actually. You start in September and end in August. Um, we're on a quarter system at Northwestern, but the hybrid program is broken out into a series of five and one-week course sessions online. You're taking one course at a time, and then we also have our four what we call in-residence sessions. So. Um, there's not a lot of time off. You're, you're consistently working and, and doing things in class, but like I said, it's one class at a time, and uh, these four in-residence sessions, as Tony was alluding to earlier, um, <clears throat> are two-and-a-half-day sessions where you come to campus. Those are spread throughout the, uh, the one year, and so we start with a two-and-a-half-day session um, in August in residency, and then again in December and April. And then your final in residency is uh, um, the wrapping up of your coursework and then also graduation in August. Um, but it is an intense experience. It's an accelerated program to be sure, and it's all in one year. And so my question coming back to the panel is how do you do it all? Um, Brandy, there's a lot going on, right? I think that work-life balance is a, a hot topic and has been for quite a few years. And now we're adding another really big bucket to to uh, to your time management um, capabilities um, how are you managing the the time and the and the work while you're in the program this big new bucket that's been added sure uh, you you truly do need to take it day by day but that's the beauty of the MSC program I am a mother a wife a professional and a student so as you can imagine the days are quite long <laughs> but if you're doing something that you love it doesn't seem to weigh on you as much so with this MSc program for me personally the studies not only the study of communication but they take it with a lens of leadership so you're coming at it from a leadership and best communication practice perspective and so knowing that I, I have that to learn and I'm able to apply that information every day, I truly look forward to learning. And the great thing about this program for those of you entering is you really are able to do it in a time that works best for you. Now, yes, you do have deadlines every week you need to meet and you're expected to meet, but you're able to meet it at the pace and time that works best for you and your schedule. There's a lot of times that people in our program are, are traveling for business, myself included, and you, you just, whenever you have a spare moment, you find the time and you just make it work and you find your own rhythm that works best for you. And that's what I encourage you to do is don't compare yourself to, you know, Tony or Nate or, or, or whomever else that, that you're with in your program, find out the rhythm that works best for you and you'll be very successful. I think that's really great advice. I think um, I heard an, another alumni say that the worst answer is also the most exact, is the most accurate answer, which is you just do it, you figure it out. I think that some people become highly structured and regimented and some are, like you're talking about Brandy, kind of fitting it in where they can. Um, Nate, what's your experience been? You're a, a pretty busy guy. <laughs> yeah, so I've been super happy with the experience so far. I agree with a lot of what Brandy said. I guess, you know, my situation um, was maybe a little different in that my wife and I had a new baby when I was two months into the program. Um, and despite how that may sound, we've actually been able to, to make it work and I feel like I haven't really had to sacrifice in any one area um, I can and I think that's because of the flexibility of the program I feel like I've been able to focus on school when I needed to focus on school focus on home when I needed to focus on home and focus on work when I needed to focus on work and I think again that just goes back to the flexibility and, and like Brandy said you find time to make it work 
uh, I bought an iPad. You can get all your readings electronically. I'd carry that iPad with me, and when I had a half an hour of free time somewhere, I'd pull it out and, and start doing some classwork. And, and that's, I think, some of the beauty of the online program. Um, I'll pause there. Yeah, no, that's a, a great segue into, you know, some of the specifics of the curriculum. So like we were saying, the online portion of the program is preset. And so this is the course, these are the uh, courses that you will take um, <clears throat> online with your classmates. And they're delivered in a specific order where some of the materials kind of build and calls back to previous coursework. Um, but Tony, I'm going to come to you. Can you talk a little bit about uh, describing some of the online learning environment? What was that like for you? Had you taken online courses before? Um, and uh, what, what um, I guess the second part of that question is, is can you maybe describe a, a typical online assignment or the online experience for you? Okay. I, at that point, I had never taken an online uh, assignment before. And um, I was, was kind of um, a little apprehensive about what that was going to be like if I was going to be able to, if I had to read everything online, because I am much more of a tactile person. I gravitate towards still re reading books, and I, um, and over my e-reader, I still keep a um, a physical journal that I write everything in. So what was what was that going to look like? And um, what was really good about it is that the platform that you'd be working off of allows for 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 both. You can if you are somebody who doesn't who's paperless, you can read everything to Nate's point, like on your iPad. Um, if there's certain things that you want to um, be able to read. Um, at your leisure, I was in a situation, I still recycle, but I, I would print um, the PDFs and things like that so that I could read them at my leisure. Um, so in terms of um, flexibility and reliability of the platform, you're, that, I, if that's a concern, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't let that be anything that would hold you back or be a hindrance. It, it, it will adapt itself to, to your needs. And in terms of the coursework, it definitely builds on each other. And um, there's going to be moments where um, you'll feel like, was this really planned all along? And it was. It really was. Um, and, and so that you don't feel like you're just learning something new every six weeks, that there's still a running, there's still a running thread that is going to relate and, um, and impact not only what you've previously learned, but it'll be something that you'll kind of like, okay, I may need to know this for, for the, the next class. And the, um, the way that the classes are structured, it was eerie um, for many people in my cohort that what we were learning was actually dovetailing with things that would be happening at work. Um, and, and it was like this interesting synchronicity that would happen. Um, and so whether or not it was, you know, you just had, you just had the class and now you're, you're facing it or you're in the middle of the class and you're currently facing it. So there is this um, not only um, kind of theoretical aspect to it. There's a practical element and, and a real life element that it, it all just kind of blends and comes together and it just feels very holistic. Um, thanks. I think I want to ask Brandy too. This is an important topic, right? I think that the online learning and, and one of the kind of <clears throat> knocks historically against online learning is that it's um, sort of impersonal and you're on your own and you're moving through all of this at, at, uh, kind of in a vacuum. But I think sometimes, a lot of times, frankly, the MSC, there's a fair amount of interaction with your classmates in these five-week courses. Can you talk to that a little bit, Brandy, what your experience has been? Sure. Um, first of all, our class all are on an app together on WhatsApp, and we'll communicate pretty much daily, right, Nate? <laughs> we pretty much communicate back and forth with one another, just not only from a support and a friendship system, but in terms of questions that people have um, for further clarification, for instance. 
in terms of the interaction that takes place within the classwork itself, in most classes you have these discussion boards and your professors will pose questions to you based off of what you've read or the videos you've watched and you provide your perspective on it and then your classmates will go on in their due time and add their feedback. Now again, there's uh, date ranges that you need to do this all within, but there is a level of flexibility in it. So you have that continual engagement and dialogue with your classmates. And I've seen that in all of our programs thus far up to this point. There also have been some um, classes, which are one with collaborative leadership, where every week we were with a different group and we had to schedule a the time among a few of us and go through an exercise together. That was one class. So there, there is continual interaction. So you're not just on an island by yourself and you'll really start after that first in residence. It's amazing and very fascinating to me how quickly you all will mesh and really support and rely on one another and you um, have a great network of not only colleagues, alum, but friends uh, for the rest of your life from this program. And ever, I, I, I know I'm speaking for myself, but I, I feel they all have a special place in my heart and always will. And you, you bond and you go through this together. And then you, as you're going through your classes and you're having your dialogue on the discussion boards, you really um, get to know each other even better and can pose different questions to one another and just continually learn from one another that I, I truly believe, and Tony maybe can speak to this better since she's an alum, but I truly believe you'll continue to learn from one another th throughout the rest of your life as much advantage as you can take of that do. I think that's a great segue into, into the in residence sessions. And I think that um, kind of the, the connections that you're talking about are largely uh, a result of this hybrid model, right, of, of having both the in-person and the online interactions happening. Um, the in-residence sessions that happen, the topics that are covered in them specifically are here on the screen. Um, like I said before, we start the program with two and a half days focusing on cultural intelligence. Um, and that's, <clears throat> I think, asking the students in a few different ways to be a little bit vulnerable and that vulnerability lends itself to establishing some really strong connections with your classmates. And to Brandy's point, then these connections, they, they're gonna last forever. Um, I think that the, the uh, relationships that are built in the program are very, very strong. Um, and uh, uh, like I said, I think it's largely a result of, of kind of this format and, and style of learning and also people understanding that you're all kind of in this together. Everybody's busy, everybody has a lot going on and um, moving through as, as a group and supporting each other is something that, that happens uh, pretty organically. Um, <clears throat> the final piece of the curriculum, so we've got the courses that you take uh, online and the in-residence sessions, and then also a capstone project. And the capstone project is actually three different pieces um, that you're working on different aspects of it kind of throughout the year. You're working on uh, a, a visual portfolio, basically this kind of portfolio of um, your, your experience in the program where we're asking you to select a, a number of pieces, we call them artifacts of the program that have been significant or have some special meaning to you and you're adding them to this uh, online um, uh, portfolio of your experience and kind of keeping track and watching the evolution of your understanding of what's happening in the MSC program grow as you move through. And then everybody works on a fairly significant um, strategic communication assessment or training and development package. And then last but not least, working on a professional identity, which is really kind of polishing um, your understanding of yourself uh, and, and how that's presented out to the world, not just in the form of perhaps a, a resume or a leave behind, but um, how you describe your experience and how you describe who you are as a person and as a professional and as a leader in your organizations. And so all of these pieces combined, the, the coursework, the in-residencies, the capstone project. Tony, I'll come back to you because um, you mentioned it first. You're using this out in the real world. Is that true? Can you give us any examples or, or tell yes. the story? Yes, actually, there's um, three areas where I'm, I'm using it in the real world. Um, one aspect, when you talked about the in-residence, um, 
there was a crisis simulation that was not only, yes, was it fun, but it was delivered in such a high-tech professional way. I mean, we were able to access fast Facebook. We were um, through this mock company. We were receiving text messages via the mock company. We're receiving phone calls um, as from a mock position, but it was so real. And so I completed that on a Sunday afternoon and um, went back to my life. And then that following Wednesday, um, we were rolling out invitations um, via an automated event management system. And one of the consultants um, out of the 1,800 invitations that went out, there were 60 that belonged to a consultant where the names didn't match the actual person that it was sent. So instead of saying, Dear Toby, um, it would have said, Dear John. And so we, it was amazing to be able to receive that information and to immediately apply what I had just learned, okay, assessing the situation and then being able to say, This was a mess up. Um, how can we deliver and communicate to these 60 people? And um, being able to, to do just that, um, offer up the vault, be, be honest and say in, in an effort to handle this in, in a 21st century way, unfortunately, this happened. And um, But this did not mean that we did not carefully curate who I wanted to invite. And this is what the consultant was able to send. And in actually being that vulnerable, addressing the situation and doing it in a calm way, he actually wound up receiving more people wanting to connect and to respond and to be like, I completely understand. I thought it must have been a, mess, a mistake or I, that's happened to me and being able to kind of leverage business out of that. Um, so, and, and my reaction to it being something that wasn't like, oh my gosh, am I going to get fired? What's going to happen? Kind of a thing. But instead being able to have a really cool head about it and to kind of, you know, go internal and really understand what what the core issue is and then being able to address it in a really direct and concise way. So that's one example. Um, but another example is understanding how I lead meetings and networking um, from the leadership class, being able to have the opportunity to see myself um, and how I respond in a team, and then to see how I also handle leading and how to be a better teammate, but then also how to be a better leader. And it was interesting because you are going to not only learn from your members of your cohort, um, but you're all, it also deepens your respect and care for them and in a way of being like that is something that I admire and I respect and I'm going to adopt that in a way that's going to be that's going to be authentic to me. Um and so it's another way of of building the those relationships as well. So that's how I would say um the the coursework really does have a real world applicability and and I'm still using it even now. Um that I'm out of the program in a, in a more, on a regular basis much more, but now it's such at a point where it's just, it's a, it's a quick tool that I get out of my toolkit and respond quickly. It's not even like I have to now think about it. It is almost a, a very organic and natural flow to how I respond to things. Um, yeah, thanks, Tony. I like the point. I think that sometimes people get in their head that they're going to be in this program for a finite amount of time and then this giant switch flips as you graduate and walk across the stage and suddenly you have all this knowledge, but it's not the case. You're talking about uh, the, in the second in residency session that happens in the middle of the program and being able to use that information right away. Um, Nate, you're about three quarters of the way through the program. Have you found any of this stuff useful so far in your real world? Absolutely. So I would agree 100% with Tony's earlier comment about how um, I know I found that the curriculum was like eerily applicable to the things that I was that I was working on. Um, I mean, 
it just it would be the, the the things that we're learning in class are things that I was bringing back into the workplace the next day. Um, in many cases, whether it was an issue that came up or or something that we were working on. So I think that I don't really have any better vote of confidence in the applicability of the program than that. I think it's it's top notch. I think, and also as Tony pointed out, just the way that the curriculum was really sort of I think thoughtfully put together and and builds. Um, on itself over the course of the year. I think you may not always be apparent how that's working, but I've found that to absolutely be the case. And I'll just give you one real quick example. We mentioned the um, capstone project. This this capstone project is something that, as I was putting it together, I realized I was really working on some of the elements of this in the very first class and bits and pieces of classes um, since then have, have I've drawn into this project. The project is something where it's not really it's not due until graduation in the end of July, but I've actually just earlier this week presented my research findings to the management team and the president of my company um, because this was a project that actually mattered to the business and we wanted it done soon. So um, I kind of made it a point to say let, let me let me get as much of this done as I can now, and I think now I've got two months to sort of polish it up and, and turn it in as something that's going to meet the requirements of the program. But um, absolutely applicable, valuable work that I was able to, to marry with, with the coursework. And so I would say to the extent that any student can really think about that and be thoughtful um, in how, how you are applying it, the better. Um, it may not always be obvious at first, but I think there are absolutely opportunities to do that. I like it. Thanks for sharing. Um, Brandy, anything to add? Uh, they've both nailed it in terms of the applicability <laughs> and what it offers. I'm afraid I'd just be restating. I don't want to I don't want to do that. It's it's all true what they said. Yeah. Um, so moving forward, I guess we're talking about this this curriculum and, and uh, um, what specifically you're gonna be learning and the order that you're going to be learning it and is it applied and I think it's important to talk about kind of who's delivering this right and so the faculty um, in the MSc program and at Northwestern I think you expect a, a certain level of quality right when you're applying or considering um, a program like the MSc at a place like Northwestern and um, you know we could put up on the screen here an incredibly long list of, of awards and research that's been accomplished and published by all of the faculty that are teaching in the MSc program. I think it's also important to talk about the level of assess accessibility that you have to these folks as well. And I'm going to ask the panel to talk briefly about that. Um, if anything specific comes to mind in terms of not only the quality of the teaching, but also these aren't just people that are kind of popping into your lives for five weeks and then disappearing or only available during certain times of the week uh, when assignments are due or something like that. What's the level of access been? What's your experience been uh, with regards to faculty in the hybrid program? Um, anybody? I can, I'll start just quickly, this is Nate. Um, so I've found, and you will hear this, I think from Amy and many others throughout the program, it, this is a little bit of a choose your own adventure type of proposition. So you're going to get out of it what you put into it. Um, as Toby mentioned, and I've found this to, to absolutely be true, the, the caliber of the faculty is top notch. I mean, you know you are talking to the real experts in the field, and that's exciting to have that access. I mean, I have found, though, you know, this is an online program, and it's, people aren't necessarily going to come to you. Um, every professor's got a different style. Some were very engaged, some were less so. Um, I found the most rewarding experiences I got sometimes was whenever I made it a point to reach out with a specific question or a specific issue um, and, you know, get on that professor's calendar for office hours or a 30-minute phone call or something like that um, where I was able to really kind of talk with them one-on-one, -on -one, ask questions, um, and get their thoughts. And, and I found when I did that, it was, it was an awesome opportunity, got a lot of great insight and feedback. Um, I just would encourage any student, you know, again, to make sure that you do that because if you just kind of sit back and wait for the discussion board responses or watch the video lectures, you're probably not getting everything that you could get out of this.
Thanks, Nate. Tony or Brandy, have anything to add? I can go. Um, I would also say that the um, faculty is really the kind of one of the most, if not the most important aspect as to how um, you're able to receive this information. And the way that I personally have, have um, looked at it has been, if you think of almost every training montage in any movie from like Karate Kid to Kill Bill to, um, you know, Game of Thrones even, um, that that there is this aspect that they are definitely not making it hard um, or challenging as a punishment, but they recognize they're on the other side and they know that this is going to challenge you and um, make you better. And so there is this, um, this feeling that the system is not, even though it is challenging and it is rigorous, um, is set up to help you and not to fail you. And while their style may be different than what you um, may like, there is still something that you are learning from working with that style. Um, and that there is a takeaway that, again, when it comes back to leadership, huh, okay, that is not my natural style, but what I do like is this element. Um, and what you are going to be conscious of is that there's still passion and a love for what the faculty members do, um, that they have for what they do, that just translates. And so it's still coming from this, you know, really positive place. Um, and it's not something that is, you know, meant to meant to beat you up because they think that you're horrible and awful and need to be punished, but instead that they think that you are truly a, a an amazing individual that they want to give their time to help you be better. Um, and to even, in some ways, if you're in a position to surpass them, then so be it. Like there's very much that platform that they want to give to you. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good point, right? I mean, um, the the entire experience is you earn this degree, I guess, is the best way to put it, right? Like, um, it's not something you you coast through. Nate says you get out kind of what you put in. You have to put a put a lot of work um, into this program to be successful. So I think that uh, those are those are terrific points and well taken. Um, I also think it's important to, to kind of mention that your faculty aren't your only teachers throughout this experience, right? All of your classmates are sharing their experiences with you as well. We bring in 20 to 25 students to the hybrid program each year. And um, a, a quick kind of glimpse at some of the demographics here to give you an idea of who uh, you're potentially going to be taking classes with. And the, the um, Average age and age ranges are up there just to give you an idea and, and a little bit of understanding that this is an experienced group of people that we're bringing into the program um, and people that have significant contributions to lend to the program. So like I said before, you're not going through this program in a vacuum. You're going through it with a group of people who are accomplished, um, ambitious, driven individuals, and who represent, they're based on the industries and job functions represented, a, a wide range of um, expertise. And so we have people from many different professional industries, many different job functions. And as you could see with the curriculum and, and the material that we're teaching, it's applicable to just about any job that I can think of. And that's what makes it attractive to people from so many different types of places. Uh, Brandy, I know that you were talking about this earlier, but the relationships that you develop with your classmates, um, they happened uh, very quickly for you, and it's it's not just the personal relationships, but I think the professional and academic um, back and forth that happens is an important part of this program as well. Is that fair? Oh, Brandy, are you there? You might have lost her. Anybody else have something, uh, Tony or Nate, talking about the kind of importance of of diversity within your classmates and, and learning from each other as well. 
Yeah, I, I was. Um, oh, <laughs> go ahead, Nate. You go ahead. You you go ahead, Tony. <laughs> um, I was 24 when I started the program, and um, what was really awesome, felt awesome to me was the fact that I got to really learn from masters in their own industry. I had um, several C-suite level members in my cohort um, that were currently CEOs and um, of companies, um, people who were definitely um, in senior leadership in their companies. And so these were elements that I wasn't necessarily able to get in my current company work, you know, um, being able to have that level of vulnerability, that level of access, and that ability to tap their their brains from a um, from more of a contemporary standpoint and less of a you know subordinate direct report type of a standpoint. And so being able to not only it kind of humanized um, the the leadership, um, being able to recognize that oh okay I'm in the cohort with people who are at the C-suite level. I work with the C-suite level and um, they're facing a lot of the challenges that I'm facing um, or have gone through a lot of, and felt the, a lot of the feelings that I have gone through. But because we, they now hold a certain position and we project things onto them, um, they, they um, don't necessarily get to share this or we don't get the access to, to hear this information from them. So for me, as um, someone who loves to, to who's, who has a lot of curiosity and learning from people who um, have have done it and are on the other side of it. It was an amazing experience for me to be able to have that kind of access and to consider people at that level close friends um, and somebody that I can pick up the phone and, and make a phone call to and and almost strategize if I make this move at this level what are the different ways that this can be perceived and and being and them being true members of my own personal board of directors and so that's one thing that um being able to learn from the peers has helped to do great points thank you tony i think that um yeah the people in the program the faculty the staff and, and your classmates it's just a large support network uh, as you're moving through the program but also, uh, to Tony's point, it, 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 it goes on for, for a very long time after that. Um, <clears throat> and you're going to be an alumni, it says on our website, much longer than you're going to be a student. And the importance of that alumni uh, connection, alumni network, is hard to understate, um, hard to overstate, rather. And the MSC program itself, itself is uh, moving closer to 2,000 alumni. We've been around for over 30 years, and we have more than 220,000 uh, Northwestern alumni as well. And this is a group of people that it's not just 220,000 people spread around the world. It's, it's 2,000 and 220,000 people that have um, been to and successfully completed uh, degree programs at one of the most prestigious and rigorous um, academic institutions on the planet and it's also a group of people that pick up the phone and they respond to emails and there's this camaraderie and connectivity that exists um, amongst the people that have spent time on this campus and like I said it's hard to, to overstate the importance of um, of that network um, <clears throat> in the spirit of time I uh, want to kind of wrap up here and uh, Give a quick reminder to everybody that we do have one final round uh, deadline coming up for applying to the program if you're interested in starting this fall. We're starting in September and the application is due June 17th. I had a couple slides about specifics of application uh, materials. Matt and I are happy to meet or talk with anybody um, offline uh, individually to answer any questions that you might have about the application process. Uh, Matt, if you don't mind putting up um, your, I see I have my email, but your email and the general campus email, uh, the general admissions email in the chat as well could be helpful um, for anybody to reach out to us at any time. And then I want to come back to the panel for um, any final thoughts, any final words of wisdom, um, advice that you would have for somebody that's uh, thinking about starting the MSC hybrid program. Um, Nate, do you want to start? 
Um, yeah, my advice would be um, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. So if you're thinking of applying or you have applied, you know, just be ready and be committed to to be all in for a year um, because it's just a year and that really will go by quickly and you want to make the most of it. Um, I think the other thing, more practical, I guess, is just use this as an opportunity to be thinking about how can I apply this because I've found for me that was the best way of learning and I was fortunate that I could do that. Wonderful. Thank you, Nate. Um, Brandy, are you there? Brandy mentioned she might have to run to a meeting. So, um, Tony, final thoughts, words of wisdom, advice for incoming people? Yeah, um, I, and I, when I, I, here's what I will say. I will say the rigor. Um, I think appreciate it, embrace it, don't complain about it. Um, it's going to be what gives weight to your degree. It's a master's degree at, from Northwestern. Um, it's supposed to challenge you, and it's why everyone's not doing it. Um, and I would just kind of reiterate the system is not set up to help you uh, fail, but it's set up to help you succeed. And so to think of the whole journey as kind of a marathon or any you know kind of fitness activity, you're going to feel better when you do it. It's not going to be sustained like you know 5,000 degrees. You'll have spikes like that, but you'll have recovery um, where you'll have um, classes that will allow for you to kind of, because you naturally either have a natural affinity to it or it's something that is like, huh, this is a design class and there's a creative element in you that, so that'll kind of take some of the, it'll be a, the heat uh, off of um, the intensity, but when, when it's talked about that it's going to be moments where you are going to have to find the time and you are going to have to prioritize um, certain things, um, but we all find ways to do the things that we prioritize. And so um, it will definitely, definitely be worth it. Um, and and you're not, you're not going to feel bad at all for, for making those sacrifices that you do. Hi, this is Brandy. Can you hear me? Oh, hi, Brandy. Hi, sorry, I've had connectivity issues. I apologize. Can I add my just quick two cents? Yeah, please. You all, in short, will not regret this experience. It is absolutely amazing in all ways up and down. Um, you learn, and literally, I learn something or read something or hear a video and almost the next day I'm able to apply it. It's similar to what people have said, because it's communication, we communicate every day. And we're in a society where people have their heads in their technology and not in engaging and interacting with one another. So a lot of people are losing that edge and understanding how to communicate and bring forth appropriate worthwhile dialogue. And this program gives you that and you really stand out and you're just able to apply almost daily what you learn and I highly encourage you to dive into this experience you will not regret it even in those times where you think oh I don't know if I can do this anymore tell yourself you can and you will not regret it and you'll be so proud of yourself when you're done um, I'm not gonna say it any better than any of uh, the students and alumni just did so I uh, am excited and very grateful <clears throat> for uh, Nate, Tony, and Brandy joining us today. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure listening to you talk about your experiences in the program. Um, I've certainly learned a lot. Uh, up on the screen here are a few different ways for anybody that's interested in the program to connect with us um, in our social media element <coughs> elements. And then uh, we would love to have a conversation. Give us a call, send us an email. Um, start an application and uh, we would love to see as, as many of you who are interested as possible in the fall. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there and again thank our students and alumni for joining us today. Thank everybody else that was able to take a little bit of time out of their day to spend with us as well. And um, like I said, happy to answer any questions moving forward and wish everybody a great day. Thanks a lot everybody. We'll sign off now.